line search before you dig, uh, an organization that, uh, as you'll see from the screen, uh, effectively acts as an online system to um, provide information for people planning work so that they avoid any um, utility strikes and asset strikes. Um, Richard's got a huge amount of data from the searches that he receives through that system and then from that has been analysing that information to look at the, um, the, how that can then help moving forward in terms of prevention and also the interesting analytics that he then gets to then explain where these are coming from, who's doing them and, and what impact that's having on the industry. So I'm going to hand over to Richard. Uh, thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Rach. Thanks for that in introduction. If you could just nod, Rach, if you can hear me, and if you can see the change of the screen there, if that's all right. Does that change? Perfect. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, I look after the line search before you dig system, and I've done that for five or six years now. Um, and I'm really pleased to be able to present our, on, on what we've been looking at recently with the data. Um, it would be great to, to understand uh, those that are on the call and there's some familiar names on the participant list um, but it'd be interesting to know who who sort of used us and, um, and and what you guys know about us clearly this sort of um, this sort of delivery is hard hard for that but what I'd really love if people can ask questions throughout you know so if you've got a just an easy question a hard question whatever it might be I'd love to be interrupted um, so please do take that as a challenge um, and, 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 and engage as much as you can uh, so I'm just going to give a little presentation on what we do at LSBud and the information we gather when someone makes a search. So normally we present this on a, how you make a search and what you get back, but this is about the information we're getting back from people when they do the search. That will hopefully bring some context for the data gathered uh, and presented in this report, which is Digging Up Britain. Um, and then we'll look at the damages reported through USAG, which is the Utility Strike Avoidance Group, which I hope a few of you will know. So, line search before you dig. And move that second. Um, we are a free to use um, service, and we have one core message and one core um, objective, and that's to reduce the risk of deaths, injuries, damage, and disruption caused by asset strikes. It's a really serious subject, um, and, and something that it's very easy to forget really when things are working well but those that, that, that we look after the nation's critical national infrastructure and some very serious um very serious pipelines and cables and that's that gives us context to everything we do so every everything we do goes back to that top box so if you remember one thing from today um that's that's what we judge ourselves on and and, and, and how we work so how do we achieve that um we provide a free to use portal for multiple utility plans um, it currently covers over 90 members with over 800,000 kilometers of assets. It will be over a million by the end of this year. Um, and we provide that information for over 120,000 registered users. And that grows by about 2,000 2, uh, 2, every month, which is about 100 every working day, which just amazes me. We actually broke our record last month, not just for the numbers of inquiries, which was 290,000 last month, but also 3,000 people um, were registered last month which is just fantastic that, that that awareness is out there of new people searching all the time uh, so we even with um with obvious uh, reductions in numbers of uh, in, in the sort of second quarter of this year we expect to it to increase the number um, over that 2.8 million this year um, that's if current forecasts are, are correct so what we're talking about today, and again, reiterate that top box, but introducing that document there, which is about looking at what, um, what information is gathered by providing our service to, to those many stakeholders that use it. So it's a national service. Um, it's free to use online, instant 24 seven. Um, and this is the, these are the numbers um, as, as, as we go through, and I'll touch back on those later. This is what it looks like when you look at it on a map. Um, fairly, fairly cluttered, and I, I don't know what that, what more this shows. Whether whether that it's a very high concentration of, of of searches in the areas that you'd expect it in London, Cardiff, Birmingham, all those sort of places, or that we have the odd person in the UK that that that, that likes to look in the sea um, when they're expecting to look on land. Um, so we give that sort of unfiltered, um, that so that people can see absolutely every search that, that's attempted, but from the Shetland Isles down to the Isles of Scilly. Uh, so, so yeah, absolute 
coverage um, from from those users. And and the key the key users or the, the very high volume users are the ones you'd expect. So in, in particular in the utilities industry, and we'll touch on that through the reports um, as we go through. So who's covered? Um, so it's not everyone. Um, it, it was formed by four pipeline operators. Um, so you can see there are the top four of SO, Mainline, Master Jetline, and then BPA coming on, uh, who have some very high pressure fuel pipelines, so running up to about 100 bar, which is about 30 times the pressure of a, a car tire, uh, with, with running about 10 tons of fuel a minute. So you can imagine those, those pipelines are, are, are fundamental, that it's, it's fundamental that those aren't interrupted in any way but they are very un unusual in as much as people think of gas electricity water and telecoms but they don't necessarily think of fuel so that's where we started we started with the the assets that people wouldn't necessarily think about and as you can see there you know that first nine years um a, a wide variety of different companies but the last one there electricity northwest was a fuel pipe uh, was an electricity dno in the northwest of england with a roughly fifty thousand kilometer network so really changing from unusual assets to the much more mainstream. And, and, and as we went through the, through the years with Western Power there um, and Northumbrian Water there, uh, but also lots of different types. So Zeo is a, a, is a widespread telecoms operator, um, Fulcrum, uh, independent networks all over the country. And there's, there's two, two very, very large operators at the bottom there, SGN and UKPN um, with, with the gas and electricity networks. And as we go through, you looking at all sorts of things there, including Heathrow Airport, uh, SS, uh, the SSE Group, as well as um, some operators of offshore wind turbines. So all sorts of different things. Water company there with, with um, two water companies, SES Water and, and Portsmouth, um, and, and then even a, 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 a university fiber network. So really real mixture now of, of every sector. Um, and they all, what's really interesting is every one of those companies wants something slightly different um, they might have similar assets but they all have different experiences and, and what we do is 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 model is provide a bespoke um, operating service so that, so that each one of those can do their own thing so if they want to respond to something slightly differently they can but the user still gets to search through one place so just looking at what we get from when someone makes a search so hopefully this screen looks familiar to to many of you um, and as you can see here the inquiry type work category and work type is 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 is, is, is the key information we're looking at here so what we're able to do when someone's looking at a single excavation site for a water main repair for example that conveys a different risk to if they're putting uh, using piling for a major highway structure and with that risk we can generate different responses um, and, and, and it can generate different risk assessment criteria for our members. So that's very simple information that we get from the user, but you'll see that that feeds a lot of the information we look at in the, in the um, not just the responses, but the um, Big Net Britain report as well. And you can see their uh, dates and references and all sorts and who they're working on behalf of. The next bit of information is the location, which is obviously fairly critical, um, uh, but that information is, is, is is used in an obvious way, you know, looking at where they're working and where the pipelines are, or pipelines or cables. Um, so that's all I want to say on those two. The results are, are given, immediate results, and, and, and that starts the process of how to get a response back. Um, and as you can see there, lots of different um, asset owners and, and contact numbers. And just looking at a, an example response here. So this is SGN, so this would be if you searched for um, fuel works in Scotland or the south southeast of England, this gas company, um, you know, the GDN network here, shows you the area of your in, uh, area that you searched. Yeah, it shows you where the pipes and cable uh, pipes are. But what that's done in the background is also escalated it, if appropriate, to a, a member of the SGN team to review and make sure that your works are not going to um, uh, adversely affect their their, their apparatus. So that wouldn't necessarily just be if you're if you're right on top of it, but if you were doing, um, say, mineral extraction or something that could, that, that um, induced vibration, then that could affect their pipeline some distance away. So you wouldn't necessarily know that, but as a user, as someone digging, you want it, it gives you a lot of confidence to know that the people that are, are, are tasked with looking after the nation's infrastructure have, 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 have 
the Cestual works um, or, or the type of works you're doing. So that, that, that's the, the plan, the, the, map, the map symbols, the, the um, top and tail letter, and that, that, that has all changed depending on, on what you've been doing and who you are, so you get the appropriate guidance for when you're doing the work. It's very, it's very important for, for us to recognise that the asset owners are not just showing a line on a plan. It's not, it, that, that might be what it looks like to, to those using the information, but actually what's going on in the background is much more complex. Um, and it's, it's risk assessed so that they know that or they can manage the, the works going around near their network as best they can. So this is, the, and this hopefully gives a little bit of a picture of, of um, why they need to do that. So this is central Birmingham in a, in a typical month. I think this is a year or two ago that we, we did this. So those, those red polygons are the searches received through LSBUD. And as you can see, if you're an asset owner with a pipe or a cable in that location, how do you know which ones are most, or, or a network of them, how do you know which ones convey the most risk? And I think to, to us, that's the most interesting thing because if you said, right, okay, we've got a team and we're gonna go out and supervise them, we're gonna work with them every, every, every job there, then you'd have a team that was so big that it would just be uh, impossible to manage um, and, and, and the time scales and everything like that. So what, what's- Hi, Johnny. Perhaps... How are you doing? Hello. I'm all right. Uh, One second. Uh, I'm just gonna mute. <laughs> I don't think that, that, that conversation was meant for me. Um, so I've, um, we'll, we'll keep going. Again, I, I said if you, could, if you could interrupt, that'd be great. <laughs> if you could interrupt with a question, that'd be even better. Um, but if you could, uh, for, the, for, these, for these polygons here, um, the, the absolute critical thing is that if you're an asset owner and you need to know which polygon infers the most risk on your network so that you can send your team member out or give, them, or give the, uh, the excavator a ring to make sure that they're, they're aware of the risk of working near a high voltage cable or a high pressure um, gas network. So, and, and, and by by clever risk assessments, you can actually make sure that they're working on the top one, five, ten percent of uh, risk uh, or the highest risk assets um, or the highest risk work types or the highest risk excavators. Whatever whatever your criteria might be, you can do that when you know what people are doing. And and I think that's something that we're passionate about that often gets missed. People think okay, I'm, doing, I'm digging a hole, I need, I need a gas plan or I need an electric plan and that's it. It's, that is so, so not the case um, for our asset owners that are, are actively engaged in this risk assessment process. Um, and it's something that we're passionate about to make sure that people understand what's happening in the background and, 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 and the processes are taking place. Because at the end of the day, it keeps the network safe, it, keep, it protects the asset owner's network. But most of all, if you go back to that top box, that user doing that work is kept safe as well. So it's absolutely in everyone's interest to understand and understand those processes. So let's just crack on. Um, and and I think, you know, the, the beauty of doing that, so SGN came on board about in 2017 um, and, and they've been able to report to Ofgem that actually their inquiries have increased um, from 2,500 a month to 47,300. Um, it's now over 60,000 um, and they've seen a, re a corresponding reduction in their, in their network damages, which is just exactly what we want. But that's not just because they've used us, um, it, it's because they've, they've supported that with going to speak to agricultural um, colleges and, and proper industry engagement. And there's lots, lots to do and there'll, there'll always be lots to do to get to all that range of, that, that huge range of stakeholders that, that dig around networks. So this is, uh, so hopefully that gives a little bit of context. This is just going on to the Digging Up Britain report. Um, and as you can see, that's the, that, that's the search has been undertaken. And I started uh, in this role in 2014 when we we're getting about 1.4 million. And if you just said we'd have doubled in five, five, or, five or six years, I would have never ever have, ever thought that was possible. We thought that was, that was significant volumes then. Um, but we're just absolutely astounded by the, the volumes coming through the door. People, people just love digging holes and, and, and there's lots of reasons why that is, is set to increase. And something that we, we 
I suppose it's a way of looking at it, but if you think there's that's 2.8 million searches last year, but that's 2.8 million searches against 90 asset owners. And when you look at the number of interactions and the number of checks that's taking place, that's over 250 million interactions. The 250 million times that we've checked someone's work against an asset um, or a member's asset. So, and if they've got more assets, then it's even more. So there could even be a billion interactions a year uh, of the, the software is processing. When you look at those numbers, um, it just gets a little bit dizzy, um, but um, amazing amount um, that, that are taking place. So we thought looking at the type of work would be quite interesting. And, and, and we have three main options of the types of work. So there's planned initial and emergency. So initial would be when you're doing an initial inquiry, and that could be in the planning stage, um, most likely. And that's normally a, a, a planner in, on, uh, normally on an office-based role that might be looking over pipeline routing or might be looking at a road scheme and they might look at it and go, okay, we're, we're planning down this route, but there's a, there's a fuel pipeline in that route. So we'll just change it. And, or they might say, right, we're going to plan there and they find a, a gas pipeline and they speak to the gas operator and then they go into plan works. Um, all sorts of different stakeholders that, that do this. So it could be someone that's working in a, a week's time, could be working on the day. So, as you can see there, those emergency works, um, quite, I mean, there's, that's about 10% of the planned works, which is probably about, about what you'd expect, but a 59% increase from the year before is something that is a real worry. And I think when you look at some of the asset owners taking 20, 28 days to respond, those that are not on analyst budget, that is, you think there is such a difference in those working out on site and those providing the assets plans for them to be able to work safely. Um, so if someone's working the next day and it takes them 28 days, they're going to have to get on with it. Um, because if there's a water main leak, uh, then there's, there's no chance of waiting for those, for, for those uh, assets to come back. You can see... Um, Which we've got an, a question, sorry, um, Mike. Do the asset owners fund the service? Yeah, re really good question. So yeah, th yes, they do. Um, so. They, um, uh, uh, Mike, uh, if, if my follow-up doesn't work or, or if my follow-up doesn't answer the question properly for you or for any other question, just please put your mic on and, 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 and come back to me. Um, but yeah, the asset owners fund it. And the reason why they fund it is because they have a, a network out there that, um, that needs protecting. They see that if you charge people on the whole, it puts a barrier between them doing the right thing and getting the plans. So they make it available free of charge for people um, so there is no barrier to whether you're working for amy morrison's talents or the big about bt the big guys or if you're working at home or if you're two guys in a van um, that are the subcontractor of the subcontractor there isn't a barrier um, once you get onto the site there's not a barrier for you getting the right information so yeah good question it's it's not it's not a, it's not it's not universal across the world um, but it's it tends to be seen that the, the 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 most effective damage prevention strategy is to make is to reduce any barrier um, and, and the biggest barrier is cost so that's why they, they do it that way uh, interestingly with usag and 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 the re reports we've done there is a there is a historical relationship between emergency works and 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 the higher risk of damages so which doesn't surprise perhaps, but it shows that people need the information quickly. Um, they need it on site there and then, um, so that they, they, they can't be delayed in getting that. So the, ne the next one was, was looking at um, where the searches are being undertaken. And, and the, um, the, uh, this, this graph just, you probably have to look at it a couple of times. So it's, if you looked at it quickly, you'd say the private the private um, individuals are doing the most searches. It's not. This is the most. This is the percentage increase. So it's a way a way of presenting it. Um, telecoms are the are the big users. They always have, and that's one of the reasons is because OpenReach um, and their contractors. It's enforced um, that they have to do an LS bud search for every job they do. There is no question they have to do it because they they see that the risk from those four, well, the four and more of the high pressure fuel pipeline operators is one of the biggest risks to their business when they're, when they're excavating. So they, they make sure that happens nationwide, which is, which is great, it's a really good commitment from, from them. Um, but yeah, you can see there 900,000 900, searches, um, but actually 
and, and what, uh, but a fairly small increase because they're at such a high, um, high volume. When you look at private, the biggest increase is there. So over 50% 50, 50 increase in, in, in um, domestic property uh, applications. And in, uh, furthermore, planning applications up, were up 825% last year. So really interesting to see what people are doing and why they need that information. But whether it's because um, of, of relaxations in the planning, planning um, policy, and you, for those in that, in that world, we'll see even more relaxations now. So those numbers would be interesting to see for next year. Um, the water, water networks are gun, uh, you know, likely to be staying there, if not more, you know, with the PR19 challenges, reducing leakage, improving resilience and customer service, they're, they're, they're likely to stay there, but yeah, almost 600,000. And, and the same way with the telecoms with broadband rollout um, and, and, and all the government priorities there. We expect telecoms and water to be the, the, um, the, the, the big users for a long time, but private agricultural users are all, all going up significantly behind them. Um, and then the final one, the highways, I think, was, is, is an interesting one. So it's not shown on the graph there, but they, they did 421,000 last year, which is a 17% increase. And I, I'm, my stats are correct. There's 25 billion pounds worth of funding over the next five years from the DFT. Um, so the, the, that, that, that sort of sector is going to be a, a key one going forward too. So just looking at, at the sectors protected, and, and this is something, so um, you can see the, the areas that are, are coloured um, in, in, in bolded are distribution areas. So you can see with gas, incredib incredibly good connection. So the, all of Scotland, the bit that's not covered in Scotland is where there's not a gas distribution network. Um, but fundamentally, there's the majority or 80 odd percent of the gas network is, is covered now. And it's probably not surprising that those with, um, those with the um, with the highest risk assets were the earliest to join, um, and because the implications of, of hitting a gas pipeline are huge, so it would make sense that the asset owners are more proactive in, in, in protecting them. But the, the the gas companies in particular are, 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 are very advanced in, in those risk assessments, um, and and the the matrices of what happens when someone searches near a specific pipeline dependent on its pressure material. Um, or, or other in other risk, you know, there can be medium pr pressure pipelines in one location which are higher risk um, than than in, in another location. So really interesting area, um, the gas companies uh, as they go forward. I can see we've just had another uh, question. So um, what sort of star do you hold to deal with that huge number of service uh, searches? The the beauty of it is that the the, the searches are, um, uh, and this is where software comes in. Uh, handled by our software so that's all scalable um, so even with uh, with doubling um, no one using the service would have noticed any any reduction in in time scale of of, of, of those um, of those searches because they're all scalable um, and, and there's there's a lot more automation and it's probably interesting to note when when we started we had um, with the smaller operators they um, responded back on a manual process you know when they had 50, 100 um, inquiries a month. And I think when we actually started, there were 10,000 searches a year. Um, that was back in 2002. And that, because, because that was being done manually, 10,000 searches was a lot to be done manually. Um, we now do that, we do more than that in a day, um, which is, so yes, it's, it's 18 years later, but um, the software does that automatically. Um, and the um, and the response times so that an average response for one of the gas electricity or, or similar distribution networks is between three to five minutes um, for their responses to come back so that that plan I showed earlier for SGN that would have come back in four minutes or so um, uh, the, the the there's another question there the IPGTs uh, is that the in, in the independent gas network operators um, yes they do get in Involved, if I've got that correct, um, thank you, Mike, with your, with your, your rapid response on the chat. Um, yeah, so the likes of Fulcrum, um, ESP, um, those those companies uh, are, are, are members. Not not all of them. There are some which aren't. Um, we're, we're in talks with another company at the moment um, that, that have that type of network um, because they've got sites 
dotted all over the country um, and that must be very difficult for them to protect and, and a lot of wasted time when someone searches. So if you look, if you speak to those companies, you'll find that about 1% of the searches they get um, have a, a near their networks. And so for the 99%, that's a waste of time for them and it's a waste of time for everyone else. Um, and, and it can delay projects and cost um, when people are waiting for, for results. So that's a, that initial filtering, i.e. just telling people when you're near or, or far, um, then that, that's, that, that's one of the key things for them. So making it, making it more, much more efficient for them. So then just moving on to, to gas. Um, sorry, so, so from gas. So, so this is a, um, an interesting area for the, um, that, that Wales and West have come back with. That they've, from coming onto the system, they've they've helped ensure that their teams can focus on the, the much more complex and challenging inquiries over high pressure pipelines. And, and, and very interesting to to hear that kind of feedback. That we've not taken the noise out because I think if you describe low pressure networks as noise, it's 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 wrong. Um, because that every every search can lead to a, it can lead to a loss of life, so we, we shouldn't we shouldn't look at those as, as less important. But there has to be a line somewhere, and, and, and looking at um, those highest risk pipelines and the highest risk works is is where the where the asset owners are, are able to do so um, when they when they have those numbers. So then moving on to electricity, um, so the seventy percent covered, so nice solid blocks there. Um, we hope to get the rest rest of them on um, as as well. Um, there is currently a risk in the, in that northeast section, and, and as you can see, going back and forth, that northeast section is is is, is an area at, at most risk with with electricity and gas not covered, um, which is which is an area that we'd we'd love to we'd love to get get them protected uh, as well. Um, now it's probably the biggest sector in terms of assets covered because there's about 600,000 kilometers of electricity network, electricity cables on, on the site, um, on the service. So lot, lots of things in the ground in the electricity network. Water, um, you can see a fairly distinct, um, distinct uh, difference here with the colors. Uh, but there, there are some really good signs that, you know, with, with off what, doing a couple of things so pr19 reducing leakage and, and resilience and things were mentioned earlier um but it's it's our understanding that actually leakage caused by third party strikes is has now been counted as leakage which it wasn't before which um which hopefully will will, will, will change attitudes um the good thing is there we've, we've we've just brought on the last year or so um ses water and portsmouth water um, and again very happy that, that we're able to um to get some good support from those guys um, and it, it says a very similar thing to the, the Wales and the West um, quote there is leaving us more time to do what we do best. So they're, they're, they're concentrating on, on, the, on, the, on the critical bits of their, of their networks. Richard, um, another question on, uh, on water. And um, it says there are a number of water companies not featured on Line Search who operate their own search system in-house and charge for the privilege. Are they just reluctant to come over to Line Search or have they just not been approached yet? Um, that there isn't a water company that hasn't been approached. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're often out there. I think it's 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 probably diff more. It's more difficult with the water companies to connect um, the the risk of digging works to a safety um, to a safety implication. I think when you look at the history of our service and it started with fuel pipelines, electricity and gas and and chemical pipelines, all sorts of things. But when there's when there's such an obvious health and safety impact then there's that it has been i'm not saying it's right or wrong but there has been a better um strike rate with with, with them joining the service um now if you hit a high pressure water main or a sewage main then then there's still a major problem um but it tends to be with those companies that the, the developer services um manage manage those um search facilities and our challenge is is, is really conveying how much more difficult it is for users to to get the information from them as an extra step each time, um, especially for those doing significant volumes of jobs. Um, so really it's about raising raising the awareness within the water networks um, that actually sharing your data leads to less strikes and that less strikes might not affect the developer services team, i.e. the ones which are, are, are in charge of sharing the plans, but will impact the customer service, the, the asset management, or, or, or the other, um, 
uh, departments in that water company that bear the cost of not sharing that widely enough. Um, so that's that's our biggest challenge, and we're doing as um, we're doing a few things. We've 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 helped um, help write a white paper on on why we do what we do and how the water company could learn because we've been to in, um, water asset management events where they want to learn from oil and gas, and it's a really good area for them to do that. Uh, so. Richard, can I just ask, um, from your previous slide, and correct me if I'm wrong, aren't some of the water companies some of your biggest users of the system from a yeah. sort of searching for buried assets perspective? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, so interestingly, so this for water and the next one for other, so telecoms and water are the biggest users. So they really see the value on the user side so the contracting arms of, of the water and um, telecoms companies, whether that be in-house or, or, or external contractors, see the value of getting the asset information. Um, but it's been a struggle so far to be able to replicate that back the other way to say, guys, you're out there, you're getting electricity and gas plans within minutes for your teams to make them work safely and help them avoid asset strikes. Um, but actually, it, you know, there's an opportunity to do the right thing and do that for the rest of the industry. Um, so it's a real, it's a real challenge for us um, for them to to use the service and 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 actually, re, you know, we've had some very positive conversations with those companies from from those those areas that use the service, but they're often um, disparate to those com the, those the, the parts of the company that share their networks. As I say, there is there is a more commercial focus with water, um, and 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 selling plans. Um, it is something we. We allow through the service for those and, and, and ask that it's for those not undertaking excavations, um, but for solicitors and conveyances. Um, but it should always, as I say before, it, it, you should all, always let people get it for free if you can, because that's the way you'll protect your assets. And we would think it would be quite short sighted um, to, to apply a charge if it means that inc it increases the risk of someone getting hurt and damaging your network, um, because it would just seem a very sort of um, pyrrhic, um, pyrrhic sort of charge um, to, do, to do that. Another question, Rich, uh, does one search locate all utilities or are multiple searches required? Yeah. So the, the one search locates all of our utilities. So that's not everyone. Um, so so the, particularly for water, and that's not this one, but, but if you look at gas, so, so Northern Gas Networks, for example, aren't, aren't, aren't there, Northern Power Grid aren't there, but it would do the others, so it does do, um, for electricity, uh, SSE, um, uh, not electricity Northwest, Western Power, and electricity and, and UK Power Networks. So we, we only provide the membership um, to the responses on behalf of the members. We do give an in indication of those that aren't members, um, but that is it, it's a minefield. If I'm honest, um, there are companies springing up all over the place for telecoms assets. Um, so we, we we do our best to help um, and provide a, a free. Uh, point of call to say that these companies might have something uh, but there are increasing numbers of especially broadband operators that might have something there but yeah we only um we would provide one search and that and, and that covers the 90 90 plus asset owners so then just moving on to um usag um so our, our other our other um, significant area of work is is usag and we um we provide support, both physical and, and, and financial support to, to, um, to USAG. It's a voluntary organization, so there is, apart from that, no funding. Um, and uh, and it, it's, it's, it's done with the very best intention. So that's, which is great, because you get some really, really nice, um, nice support from industry um, operators. You know, the, we have some good support from the major contractors and, and utility companies. Um, and and from that they're able to share their knowledge. Um, so especially with the likes of Clancy Docra and um, and Balfour Beatty, they 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 help write the best practice guidance to help those two guys in the band that wouldn't wouldn't have that um, availability or that not that training information. So re really really um really positive, really really nice voluntary thing. Fortunately, you know. On the on the flip side, what we don't have is is uh, a mandation of, of of people having to um, uh, to su supply asset data, uh, sorry, not asset data, the asset strike data, uh, which would be a fantastic thing. Because I think for me, if, 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 if government should be involved in this area, it should be to, to um, or it, either through the regulator or through the health and safety executive is to have 
formal regulation of um, reporting damages. Because to me, when you don't know the damages, how can you improve the industry? Um, and, and if you don't know that on a, on a widespread uh, cross-stakeholder -stake, um, basis, then it will be misleading. Um, Rich, so, Rich, yeah, sorry, Rich. Because they've got a question, um, yeah. probably more relevant to the most the previous slide. It says, uh, apologies if I missed the detail, but do the blue areas really mean increased risk of strike, or are they just areas not registered with LSBIRD? Yeah, and, and it's a good, challenging question that, and that, um, which is good. The what we've seen from all the asset owners that have joined is that where they've been able to respond to more inquiries, not only does the risk of damages reduce, but the damages reduce. Um, where they've got the data. Now, not everyone's got the data, and this is what I mean, is that, is that we'd love for the industry to have more data because then you could do better things. So actually, if they're not on a service which provides the most um, searches, and, and, and we, we know when we've been to see companies that don't do that, um, when they do it on their own, or, or however they do it, if they haven't got more inquiries, that means they've got a higher risk of damages, which will mean they'll have higher damages. So they are at greater risk. Um, it, it is the same thing. Um, but we know from our numbers and, and, and a, a long track record of, of, of before and after numbers um, that they will be at a greater risk of strikes. So, um, uh, but yeah, uh, Tony, if you want, the, by all means, come and challenge, challenge put, put the microphone on. I'll be very happy to talk it through further um, uh, on, on, on that basis. So um, the bit on the right there is the strike damages report, which I'll, um, which I'll, which I'll go through. Um, so just looking there, what we what we did by month. So this is 2018's data. 2019 data is just closed. Um, so we've asked people to submit that by last Friday. So that will be coming out very shortly. So this is for 2018. So we're a little bit behind, but um, but but the number the the, the the patterns are pretty general um, in most years. And so we had the bar bar chart there from from the strike data, and then we we overlaid that with LSBUD inquiries. So the average time between an LSBUD inquiry being made and um, and the the work's being done is 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 within a week. So although you might say that there's, there's planning searches, yes, there are, um, but in general, it's a, it's a week delay um, on on the whole. So actually, it's it, it's good data to, to to look at look on there. And this is this is fundamental to it because if we don't know how many works are going on, how can we say whether it's more risk? than other months you know if there if there is double the amount of work going on in july than november do we know that's performing better or not so you need to have that benchmark of of, of what works going on so that that darker line there of of, of, of ls but inquiries helps show that actually it matches it there's a fair correlation but actually in the in the summer months they peak and some of the potential um explanation for that is that there's um the gangs that come on um in in the summer that might not be in the same have the same competence and might not have the same um, makeup of, of, of the gang who knows what it might be um, there's all sorts of different reasons um, but actually the one of the key things here is is for the contributors to be aware that it is higher um, because if they're aware, aware that it's higher everyone will be different you know a farmer will be different to someone building hs2 um, but everyone have have a chance to to make it different on their on in their in their gangs and, and their and their work teams so that's just um, that's just the initial strikes by month. Oh, oh, see, we've got another. Um, uh, da, 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 da. So, oh, should I note that Ucopa has recently commented on third-party interference and that they have great strides in, to make in order to improve, especially around the farming community, and have acknowledged that they need to increasingly focus on this area. Do LSBO to work with to engage with Ucopa? We do engage with Ucopa. Um, you co we 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 do as much as we can. Um, we have probably a. A, a, a much stronger relationship with Limewatch, um, who are a group of operators um, that have members that are also members of LSBUD, but they focus on the agricultural community mainly, um, as well as lots of other contractors, and they give um, awareness briefings. So it tends to be made up of uh, the, um, the, the fuel pipeline operators who have cross country assets, and most of their interference is from. Um, rural operators mainly farmers and, and contractors working in in, in farmland um, and and they they are very um very targeted on the agricultural community the agricultural community is 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 different to most contractors you, you 
especially with um, owner occupiers where you're you're asking them to do a search on their own land um, is is a very different thing to when you're when you're working on a on a highway or somewhere outside a residential address that you don't know um, so there is a difference in um, a difference in how we engage with those people but we we are st stepping up because the agricultural community is one of the highest risk um, uh, according to the HSE uh, and we know that they don't do the searches that they should um, because that's not part of their working practices. Uh, we've started uh, looking at, uh, well, we, we, we exhibited at LAMA, which is an agricultural show last year. We, we wanted to do much more this year, clearly can't, um, but we are doing more and more to engage with that agricultural community. But you know, we just had an article in Farmer's Guardian and that sort of thing. So there's lots of things that we're doing in the background to, to try and engage with, with the farming community, which they are a really important, they're not a high volume user, but they're increasingly important and are very and, are, and seen as a, a potentially very high risk user. So really important. But what you need to do is, in our experience, is make it free, make it open to everyone, um, because then when when the asset owners themselves are, are able to go and engage with their the people in their area. So we do a lot with UK Power Networks, for example. They can go to the farmers and say, right, use LS Bud. Here it is. Here's, it's, it's free to you. Here's a vehicle sticker. Go and put it on there. Um, they're only pr having to promote one thing, so whether whether you're working, again, HS2 or for them, Crossrail, whatever it might be, um, or water companies, telecoms, operators, uh, gas companies, doesn't matter if, if they're put, putting everyone to one place, which is a really good industry engagement message. Um, so yeah, ho hopefully that sort of answers the question, if, even if it's not as, as, as linked to eCopa as perhaps we'd like. I think there'll be a lot of crossover um, in, in what we do. So just looking then at location type, um, again, I think so, so some of the some of the things we found in here, you kind of go, oh, okay, that yeah, makes sense. Which, and it, you sort of half expect to see something surprising, and actually, it's quite good when it's not surprising because it doesn't surprise us that the footpath followed by the carriageway is where most strikes happen because that's where most assets are located. It's where most work takes place. So it, I think that gives credibility to the data, which is great. Um, so not much more to say on that one, um, apart from footpaths um, and the carriageway. But then we looked at the asset damage, where they were in the location type, and you can see there a clear leader, ignoring the no location recorded on the right, um, but the clear leader of low voltage in the footpath. Um, it it was, was miles ahead um, of the next one, which was, I think, low pressure gas in the carriageway. So when you look at those low pressure assets, and this is what I touched on earlier, um, that we need to be very careful that yes, it's, it's critical to risk assess and, and, and focus on the higher pressure assets, but those low pressure assets, they're, they're all over the place and they're being worked on on a daily basis. So we mustn't forget about those. They're all, every, every asset has got an importance. Um, so they're not, um, they're not forgotten or cluttered out by anything else. They're, 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 they're shown, they're, they're, they're made important um, every time. But not surprising perhaps to say that low voltage electricity um, is, is the highest. The, we did put in another classification for street lighting um, and, and street lighting you know, took some of them off um, you know, as that grew, the low voltage came down, but we suspect low voltage include, still includes some street lighting um, cable strikes because they're, they're um, slightly more difficult to locate and, and aren't shown on, on, on standard plans. Rich, another question uh, from Nicole. There is an increase of no location recorded or UBOs. What are LSB doing in way of PAS 256? So PAS 256, we, um, we help sponsor PAS 256. Um, and, and, and for those that I don't know who will know and who will, who will not. So PAS 128 loosely is, 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 is about um, locating the data, locating the assets on site. And PAS 256 is about, you know, um, about the improvement of asset records, uh, so we 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 took part in that um, we took part in that uh, steering group and helped support it. We have a UBO form that's available to people. Our view on that is that the form, as as designed by the committee in PAS two five six, being quite honest, is too too complex. Um, we have two challenges. One is that getting enough information to make it useful, um, and the other is getting enough information from enough people. So. If you ask for too much detail, no one will do it. If you ask for too little detail, more people will do it, it won't be as useful. 
Um, so we've got a, an Ofgem funded trial at the moment with one of our members where we're going to be um, asking the question of, of our broad spectrum of users and, and testing, testing how, that, how that comes back. We have an absolutely unique opportunity of 12,000 people a, um, a day getting our, our, our results from our members. And if, even if we get a very, very small percentage of those coming back to us with a, an unidentified or wrongly recorded object, then it's a, it's a way for the asset owners to uh, improve their data um, for the next person. So really, really good opportunity. Um, just seen there's another question there. So how is all this buried information protected so that it not, cannot get into the hands of potential terrorists? Yep, uh, um, it's, it's, it's something that's been discussed and at length between, especially with the fuel pilot operators since we went um, live uh, decades ago. And, and there's always that balance between risk of accidental strikes and the risk of um, someone doing something nefarious, something they shouldn't be doing. Uh, what we found over, over the years, uh, according to Concawi reports, is that third party strikes are the, the highest risk and that balance has to be there. But the, the critical thing that we don't do is we don't just go and say, there's everyone's data. What we do is to say, someone might be in this area and then it's over to the asset owner to decide whether you get that information because it should always be their individual response um, and it always should be their individual decision making. So. We're not forcing them, although they're part of a collaboration of 90 asset owners, they're not forced to take the same rules as someone else in the gas industry or someone else in the electricity industry. It is totally their call on whether their asset data goes to an individual. And, and we're absolutely passionate that's the right thing to do because there is always that balance between sending the information out and, and losing that information to a third party. Um, and it, it's absolutely their, their decision to make that, not ours. And so that's why we always, whether we automate it for them and, and provide our software or whether they have a manual process, always their decision and always will be. Um, so the interesting on, on, on here, um, so yeah, so again, the gas, there's been a continual reduction, in, although they're the low pressure there, uh, one of the highest, there has been a continual reduction on the HSC. So that's, that's positive and, and really good to show that data being used properly. Um, I'm just coming to the end of the time, so I'll, I'll, I'll whiz through these. So, but um, again, I mentioned PAS128, that was about the surveying um, surveying standards. So DC, BNA, so desktop records is, is what our service provides. Site reconnaissance is when someone goes to site and, 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 and checks for visual clues, whether it be scars in the road or overhead lines. B is detection and, and, and classified as having not just uh, a cat and, Jesse, cat and Jenny or EML locator, but also GPR or, or, or similar. And then verification is where you, you, you dig a trial hole and see where it actually is. So you would assume, um, and, and these figures do suggest that A, if you found out where it is, um, you, you are less likely to hit it. Now, that, that, that should be absolutely um, clear. You can still hit it when it's exposed, um, so that that can still happen. Um, but all the way through, the, it should be that the better you survey, the less likely you are to, um, to strike something. We've got a bit of an odd one with, with electricity here that, that actually site reconnaissance, there's more of those strikes than there was in D. So I'm just a bit cautious about that, um, but interesting figures nonetheless. And then just finally, there's, there's two, last, um, two last slides here. So the cause of damage, and, and again, I really would um, show some caution in, in, in these figures because Whereas other things are fact, you know, whether it's um, a electricity cable or in the carriageway or, or we, we get other data about what, inf what, what um, equipment was used, why the strike happened. And, and there are lots of reasons why this might not be correct. Um, so uh, just bear that in mind when looking at these things, but we, we can only analyze the data in front of us, which is, which is um, sent through by, by a number of different um, stakeholders. But the leading cause there with 35% was inadequate assessment of works, just showing that actually just planning the work could, could reduce the strikes by a third. Um, and then if you look at the, the, ne the next two are uh, uh, plan related, so improving the asset plans is another 40%. So there's a, there's a lot of work we can do. Um, now, you could say that, you know, inaccuracy of plans, you could say, well, actually, you should locate them on site anyway, and, and that shouldn't be a cause of damage. Um, but the, the Without looking at each one of these in detail, they're, they're, use, they're useful as a high high level um, high level information. Um, 
but yeah, definitely opportunities for, for improving records. Um, and then again, in execution, excavation practice is not sufficient. A lot of, lot of strikes take place when, when people have located assets on the ground and there's maybe a, a, a dicker bucket slews around or, or, or something gets struck when it's already been exposed, which is, um, and that, that could be in excavation practice is not sufficient or in inattention, in lack of awareness. So a lot of behavioral related issues here. Um, what we'd love to do is to deep dive into each, each, each strike and, and, and understand that better. Um, but as, as presented, it's just a really high level kind of view of, of what's, what's going on. So that's, that's, that's a word through. So uh, just, just leave it, you know, a few, few different points. So, so more search than any other year on record, which is great. It means more people are searching and, and keeping safe. More asset owners collaborating um, to share records again, which is great. Um, telecoms and water, biggest users. Um, the, the greatest increase in activities from the public and landowners. Um, which, which again is, is something that they're often forgotten, um, especially the, the farming community that can infer the greatest risk to a strike. Um, there is a, uh, just an absolute myriad of risk assessments to help keep people safe that no one sees, um, but, but should be very, very grateful that those things are taking place because you know, it's a really good way of keeping everyone and all the assets safe. Um, Water and telecoms likely to do more to share their data, protect their assets. When you look at, particularly over the last few months, how people have been so um, so reliant on broadband um, and, and water, obviously, with um, PR19 pressures. Um, but if I could leave you with just that USAG, if, if, if you've got any data on strikes, please, please submit it to USAG. We'll, we'll share it and we'll try and help people um, learn from it as, as much as your, your, your teams. So, yeah, that, that's it from me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Richard, thank you very much uh, for that presentation. It's incredibly interesting and it's great to see how many questions we had throughout and you've managed to answer all of them. If anybody has any other questions, you, you can still log them on here and we can share them with Richard and, and get responses back to you. I'm conscious that we need to log out at one o'clock. So uh, thank you very much for joining the Midlands branch. Very, very happy that you've joined our, uh, our technical event and I'm not going to list all the other webinars that uh, HQ are hosting for various people, but please do log on to the uh, PIG website and you can see a really good um, range of presentations and I think a, a great format. Uh, I've just seen someone's asked if we can circulate the presentation. There'll be a recording of the presentation um, and Kata HQ, I'm sure, will be uploading this soon. So you'll be able to get a copy of that and you'll be able to watch it again. But um, any questions, you, you can contact Richard directly or, or myself or go to HQ and we'll, we'll come back to you. Uh, thank you, Richard. Thanks, Rich. And uh, we'll speak to everybody soon. Thank you.